We recently talked about galaxies that defied conventional galactic evolution. I have also previously talked about the oldest galaxy that they have observed seemingly being too advanced and containing stars that have too much metal for such an early period of the universe. Of course, this is all based on the idea that redshift can only tell you distance and hence age. Well, once more scientists have found a galaxy that is too old and yet seems to have formed completely evolved all by itself in almost no time whatsoever. Let's take a walk down the Big Bang's crumbling road. Thanks to observations obtained by the Large Binocular Telescope, scientists were able to reconstruct the wild evolutionary history of an extremely massive galaxy that existed 12 billion years ago. And this would be when they believed the universe was only 1.8 billion years old. This galaxy is huge, weighing in at about 200 billion suns. Normally galaxies will reach this sort of size gradually. It is estimated that only a third of galaxies are this size, but that they contain 70% of all the stars in the universe. The current model of galaxy evolution predicts that smaller galaxies formed earlier on, whilst more massive ones formed later through merges of these pre-existing smaller galaxies. For the majority of galaxies in the universe, several billion years must pass for dramatic measurable changes to occur in their stellar populations and morphologies. At some stage, galaxies run out of the gas to generate new stars. When they examined this galaxy, they saw that it had ceased star formation altogether, implying that it must have used up all of this material. So here is the problem. A galaxy that is 12 billion years old that has already completed its main life cycle and used up all of its stars building material. They have no choice but to reason that this galaxy must therefore have formed in as little as 500 million years and used up all of its star building material. This galaxy is called C123152 and it is thought to have formed in only 500 million years which is an incredibly short time to give rise to the mass of 200 billion suns. In order to achieve this, it would have to produce as many as 450 stars per year, which is 300 times higher than the formation rate in our own Milky Way. When they examined the chemical elements present in this galaxy, they were in for another surprise. This galaxy had a very high metallicity. This really should not be possible in the Big Bang concept. The early stars were made of only hydrogen and helium, and subsequent fusion and supernova explosions of these stars would slowly start to seed the heavier elements into the universe. This means we should see a steady decrease in metallicity as we look further and further back. The metallicity in this galaxy is actually higher than that of our own Sun. There is so much debate around how galaxies form and their supposed evolution. If we take the example of the most massive galaxies observed in our local neighbourhood, then this itself shows that they contain stars that should only exist in the early epochs of the universe, suggesting that these galaxies must have existed in those early epochs as well. The formation of stellar masses as high as for this galaxy requires both high masses of gas to be converted into stars and particular physical conditions to exist. They speculate that one possible scenario is that two massive primordial clouds collapsed in on themselves and then happened to collide, triggering violent and massive star formation processes. So is there a different way of looking at this? Firstly, it is no surprise that they are ending up with such a jumbled mess. The assumption is that redshift can only ever equate to distance. As we have discussed many times, there is a component of redshift which does not originate from motion or the stretching of space-time itself. Art believed that galaxies could occasionally eject objects which might eventually turn into quasars. These would continue to move outwards, which would explain the curious alignment of quasars across galaxies. Slowly these quasars would turn into dwarf galaxies. When the quasar is initially ejected, it would be highly energetic and would have a much higher redshift. Slowly as the energy levels decrease, so would the redshift. 
This basically means that when we observe objects with higher redshift, they might be highly energetic and at an early stage of their evolution. This also means that they are not remote objects, but more likely to be much closer than the 12 billion light years they associate with this galaxy. An additional factor to consider is if these objects are not as far away, then the size that they equate to these galaxies is wrong as well. And in fact, the galaxies would be much smaller, meaning less stars would have to have been produced over a shorter period of time. But there is a problem here. If we are to assume that part of this redshift is to do with some intrinsic properties, then why is this a high redshift galaxy which is not actively forming stars? There are a number of ways of looking at this. Firstly, ARP recognized that potentially most of the galaxies we are looking at are part of our local group, not part of the greater universe. He showed that not only was redshift quantized, but also that there was an obvious shift as you moved from our local group out towards the Virgo cluster. He speculated that as you moved further outwards, there would be clear and distinct jumps in the starting point of the redshifts that we see. They would still all be quantized, but the starting points would be different. Is this what we are seeing here? Is this a galaxy that sits in a part of the universe that is much further away from our local group? Another possibility to consider is that of plasma redshift. Could this galaxy lie at the edge of a particularly active region, maybe a shock front or something similar, which is adding an additional redshift component? There are still many questions that remain unanswered but trying to study more of these examples might get us a little closer to understanding how our universe works. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.